Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, good welcome to my channel. Ah, oh, I never know how to start these videos and that is a fine example of how not to start a YouTube video. Um, today I'm going to discuss landscape photography workshops because I've just completed quite a long workshop in Patagonia, I hope you've been following along. Um, it's been great fun and I want to talk a bit more about that uh, and some of my experiences and I want to discuss landscape photography workshops in general because it seems whenever I announce a workshop or publish or run a workshop uh, there's always a small group of uh, critics who scrutinise everything I do and it's not just me, it's other photographers as well. So I want to address some of those criticisms and just give my thoughts on landscape photography workshops in general. So when I browse the deep dark forums on the internet, I find all kinds of discussions about me and about uh, other friends of mine who are also landscape photographers. And I just want to, I'm not going to name any names, I don't want to do that, I don't want to give them any kind of platform, I just want to um, address a couple of the points raised in these conversations. So the first one um, being that um, workshop, my workshops and other people's workshops are too expensive and there's no value for money. So I want to discuss that very quickly. Um, yes, landscape photography workshops can be expensive, but the thing is, you don't need to go on a landscape photography workshop. My preferred way of practicing photography is actually to hire a car, book a flight, and just go and explore by myself. But that's, that's me, uh, that's, I'm, I'm a bit of a loner. Um, and not everybody wants that. So my recent trip to Patagonia was $3,900, which is a lot of money. But there is so much work that goes into running this sort of 10 day trip to Patagonia. And I'm just gonna discuss some of the work involved, some of the behind the scenes stuff, uh, which actually, <laughs> uh, funnily enough, I, I didn't do any of this. Um, it was all Brendan. Yeah, so he had to travel there last year. Um, and he had to scout out all of the locations, work out the distances between them, the logistics, find all of the accommodation, book the accommodation for, in total, including participants in leaders and help, there was 13 of us. So it's a lot of work booking accommodation for all of these people, making sure that it all works and that nothing goes wrong. That alone is an incredibly demanding and stressful job. We had to hire the services of and pay all expenses for Mr. Greg Snell, whose job, of course, yes, was to shoot video for us, and we'll get more onto that, but that wasn't his only job. That was just part of what he was doing there. Greg was, don't quote me on this, sorry Greg if I've got this wrong, I think Greg was a tour leader in Patagonia for eight years. He speaks fluent Spanish, he drove us everywhere, he worked out the logistics of the hotels, he made sure that everyone was happy. He, when we're all trying to order dinner and nobody speaks Spanish, Greg's just like bang, 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 you know, I don't know, hola, señor, despacito, <laughs> I don't speak Spanish. But he did so much um, and we had to pay for that, we have to hire him. And I honestly believe if it wasn't uh, for having Greg on board, the workshop would nowhere near as been as much as a success it was. So that, you know, that's just some things that uh, you may not realize go on behind the scenes. And then of course there's travel, accommodation, airport pickups, drop-offs, car hire, diesel. Um, and then again, the whole sort of mental preparation and making sure everybody's happy and that we haven't even gotten on onto the photography side of things as well. So you're paying for people's experiences, uh, experience in photography. I myself am quite a successful landscape photographer, whether you like me or dislike me, whether you like my images or don't like my images. Um, either way, I do feel I have value to give to the group. Um, and Brendan too. Brendan is so experienced in travel and photography and he has a lot of knowledge um, to pass on and actually I don't think his YouTube channel does justice to how good he is and how much he knows. Another criticism is that we only take people to honeypot locations. Uh, I mean, I'm not like I'm not going to run a workshop, landscape photography workshop in the in the the playing fields at the back of my house. 
You know, you want to go to these beautiful, breathtaking locations and give people a once-in-a-lifetime experience and give them images to come away with. Now, yes, of course, there are these, you know, there's this sort of criticism with these locations that you just turn up to a viewpoint and get, get the big shot. But if you've watched my videos, you'll know that it's so far from the case. Yes, we go to locations with big mountains and turquoise lakes and it's, it's beautiful, but we really put people to work. We say, don't just shoot wide go and explore and work hard and to do that in a beautiful location like Patagonia is certainly not a criticism. Um, uh, yeah, I, I couldn't think of anywhere else I'd rather go. I'm, I'm going, to, you know, I work in the Alps, I work in Iceland, Patagonia, that's because they're all beautiful, inspiring, breathtaking locations and how can that possibly be a criticism? I will never know. The next criticism, uh, <laughs> we're not photographers. We are YouTube stars. No, we have the initiative, and we have the drive, and we have the balls to put ourselves and our work out there on a platform that is turning the photography industry on its head. We're actually making a difference, and we're inspiring waves of photographers to pick up their cameras and explore what is out there. And we are no less photographers because of how we choose to share our work. You say people pay to come on our workshops because we're celebrities. I disagree. I say we've inspired these people to want more. How can you make videos and take photographs when you're supposed to be teaching? Uh, this is the fairest of all criticisms and one I get a lot and one that I always respect and try to respond to. You see, when I run a workshop, it was make sure that the participants are my main priority. At the beginning of the workshop, I'll ask everybody if they're happy to be filmed, if they happen to be on the background of footage, etc. They are always okay with it. Now because they're my main priority, I work around the group, work with the participants, make sure they're all getting on well and doing okay. And then when everybody's happy, that is when I'll break out the camera and I'll be like, you know, I'll be like, hey, Jay, this is what we're doing and this is an example of a photograph I've just taken. Now remember when you're on a workshop, people want to see how you work as well. So that's how and why we take images. It wouldn't be much of a workshop if I didn't break out my camera and see how I interpret a scene. Um, but when you watch a video, it look it can look bad. It looks like I'm having loads of fun, taking loads of images, and having a great time. And that's because we don't film us working with the participants, because it would be incredibly awkward. Um, instead, we just take five, ten minute snippets here and there where we grab some footage and lots of the, the images that you see or the video that you see is usually walking from A to B where we're not actually doing anything. Um, and the truth is, it, the, the real, I don't know, the real deception, if you like, happens in the edit suite. So I edit my videos um, to, so to show you what I want you to see, um, which is taking me taking nice photographs in a fantastic location. Um, if I was just to record the entire workshop documentary style, not only would that be incredibly awkward for the participants, but it'd be really boring. Um, and I don't want to show that. I suppose the downside to my videos is it does look like I, it's all about me. That's what it looks like. Um, but it's not. Uh, you just don't see all of the stuff that goes on behind the camera. And remember, you're only looking at a 10 minute video that is most likely from a 48 hour period. And we had Greg who massively took the load off when it comes to filming. So actually me and Brendan didn't have to film anything. We just whack out our camera, quick piece to piece the camera and uh, job done. So that's what I would say about that. Um, look at the bigger picture um, and don't assume that what you see on video is the only thing that happens on these workshops. So my, you know, it was, it was a fantastic workshop, so much to talk about, but I, I suppose I'd like to end it with my favorite moments. Uh, so if I like to pick a couple of moments from this workshop, uh, the first one I suppose would be this, photographing this tree was a fantastic moment because we, me, my, well, myself and Chris wanted to get away from the lake and look for something a bit different and a bit unique and, um, and we were walking, the sun was setting, it was getting dark, the weather was moving in and neither of us believed that we were going to get an image. We thought possibly it was a waste of time but we persevered and finally got this image and it was fantastic. The image is great. I know Chris uh, loves the version that she took. I love the version that I took and I think this is something I'd like to do more um, but it's very difficult with a big group of people because it's very risky. You know, I would hate to lead 10 people off into an unknown area looking for some unique compositions and come away empty handed. 
Um, I suppose that's part of the reason why I don't do it, but I had the opportunity to do that with Chris and it paid off. It was, it was fantastic. And another moment that I really enjoyed, uh, at the end of the trip, we asked everybody to put their three favorite images on a memory stick and we had a showing. So we had some beers, we had some pina coladas and we played all of the images on a large TV screen at the hotel. And we all had to try and guess who the image belonged to in the group and you were only allowed to say positive comments so you were not allowed to do any criticism and why that was such a good moment is because everybody had a fantastic so you know there's a good vibe everyone was well into it and it was really exciting everyone was proud of their work but seeing the quality of images was uh yeah so it's an amazing moment for me um so there, there we go i feel like i'm waffling on a bit now um this by the way is not an advertisement for workshops. I have nothing coming up. There are rumours among the camp that Patagonia is going to happen again next year, but nothing has been confirmed. Um, and I think I have one workshop available, which is in oh, September. September in the Alps. That's a tour of the Alps. Um, I think there's a couple of places left on that. Uh, but other than that, nothing. So, yeah. Thank you so much for watching. Join me next week as I have a terrible time in Svalbard. So I'll see you then.